time, the unceasing progression of existence and events is a critical concept that seamlessly links our past, present, and future. It's like a measure. It helps us order events, compare the length or space between them, and calibrate the speed of change, either in physical reality or our conscious experiences. It's often labeled as a fourth dimension alongside the three spatial dimensions. Time is counted among the seven crucial physical factors in systems like the International System of Units, C, and International System of Quantities. In the Psi system, the base unit of time is the second, determined through the measurement of the electronic transition frequency of cesium atoms. General relativity serves as our primary model to grasp the functioning of space and time. Extensive theoretical and empirical analysis of this concept has revealed how time can be distorted, especially around black hole. Throughout history, time has been a central study in different disciplines, like religion, philosophy, and science. Temporal measurement has not only been the motivation behind navigational and astronomical ventures, but has also gained social and economic significance. The fleeting nature of time gives it both personal and monetary value. However, the definition that can encapsulate time universally remains elusive to scholars. Despite the difficulty in defining, the concept of time permeates diverse fields, from business and sports to sciences and performing arts. For instance, in physics, time helps define velocity. So, defining time using such quantities would unfortunately lead to a circular definition. In physics, time is realistically defined in terms of what a clock reads. Various systems, from the ancient periodic events and motions to the modern era's GEPs, coordinated universal time and mean solar time, help us in determining time. Despite the difference in numbers derived from different time systems, with precision, they can be synchronized all in all. Time serves as a constant, integral part of both our universe's fabric and our daily lives. Conceptually, the timeline of events can diverge in various ways across spatial dimensions. However, when two events are spaced by a certain time frame, there's a universal consensus over the sequence of occurrence from all observers. General relativity, unfortunately, doesn't provide insight into the nature of extremely brief time intervals, domains where quantum mechanics presides. Within quantum mechanics, time is perceived as a universal, non-variable factor, a stark departure from the concept of autonomous clocks of general relativity. The bridge between these two scientific views constitutes a so-called problem of time. As of 2023, the scientific community hasn't adopted a consistent theory of quantum general relativity. Humanity has devised assorted methods of temporal measurement or chronometry, typically characterized into two types calendars and clocks. Calendars, mathematical conveniences organize time into intervals. While clocks, physical systems, count the passage of time nowadays, we glance at a clock for daily scheduling and refer to a calendar for periods extending beyond a day. Modern electronic devices conveniently display both specific hours or dates marking certain events are determined by counting from a central reference point or fiducial epoch. Historical artifacts from the Paleolithic era indicate ancient civilizations tracked time via lunar cycles six millennia ago. Lunar calendars emerged as one of the first such systems, with years comprising either 12 or 13 lunar months. The concept of adding extra intercalated months into some years, as used in lunisolar calendars, was introduced to equate the 36,524-day solar year with a calendar year of just lunar months. This counting system tied the numbers 12 and 13 into various cultures. Other early calendar systems, like those of the ancient Mayans, were religiously and numerically based, designating 18 months per year and 20 days per month, with an additional five extra days annually. Julius Caesar instituted a shift to a solar calendar in the Roman Empire in 45 BI, known as the Julian calendar. The system had its flaws. The intercalation allowed for a gradual divergence from astronomical solstices and equinoxes at approximately 11 minutes annually correcting this. Pope Gregory XEI in 1582 introduced the Gregorian calendar that later transcended national boundaries to be globally accepted. Historically, noteworthy is the French Revolution's creation of a new clock and calendar system in an attempt to desacralize France and supplant the Gregorian calendar. This French Republican calendar dividing days into 100 hours of 100 minutes of 100 minutes of 100 seconds. Deviated from the base 12 or the duodecimal system, however, the system was ultimately abolished in 1806. 
The history of timekeeping spans from antiquity to the modern era, threaded through diverse cultures and scientific advancements. Beginning with the ancients Greeks and Chaldeans, from southeastern Mesopotamia, recording time was an integral part of their astronomical work made possible by the use of water clocks. Even though these required constant maintenance, this technology was refined by Arab inventors and engineers through the Middle Ages. In the 11th century, a major innovation in timekeeping was achieved in China with the invention of the first mechanical clocks powered by an escapement mechanism. Alongside this, the hourglass was used utilizing sand as a means to measure time. Crucial in navigational undertakings such as Ferdinand Magellan's Global Voyage, 1522. Around the same period, temples and churches were using incense sticks and candles to keep time. In the abbeys and monasteries of the Middle Ages, water clocks and later mechanical clocks remained prevalent. An example of this was Abbot Richard of Wallingford's, 1292-1336. Mechanical astronomical orrery constructed circa 1330. Significant improvements were made to timekeeping precision with the invention of pendulum-driven clocks by Galileo Galilei and Christian Huygens, and later the minute hand by Joss Bergen. The marking of hours with bells, originating from abbeys and also used at sea, is reflected in the Middle Dutch origin of the word clocks, clock, related to French, German, and Latin words for bell. Timepieces evolved over centuries, from small watches to specialized types like the clock of the long now. They could be powered by gravity, springs, or electricity, and were controlled by various methods, including pendulums. In ancient Greece, the concept of alarm clocks appeared around 250 BEE as a whistle program to be triggered by a water clock. This concept was later mechanized by Levi Hutchins and Sethi e. Thomas. The chronometer, a portable timekeeper that met certain accuracy standards, initially referred to the marine chronometer used for celestial navigation to determine longitude, an achievement credited to John Harrison. The term now also extends to watches that meet the Swiss agency Koss's precision standards. In terms of precision, atomic clocks top the list, accurate to within seconds over millions of years. This technology uses the frequency of electronic transitions in atoms like cesium to measure time, establishing a global timekeeping standard since 1967 when the International System of Measurements based its unit of time. The second on the properties of cesium atoms today, the global. Positioning system, along with the network time protocol, synchronizes timekeeping systems worldwide. As of May 2010, the smallest measurable time interval recorded was approximately 12 out of seconds. 1.2 x 10, 17 seconds, equivalent to about 3.7 x 10, 26 Planck times. The second, S, stands as the basic unit of time under the International System of Units, SIS. Following this, a minute typically consists of 60 seconds and an hour 60 minutes, or 3,600 seconds. A day usually comprises 24 hours or 86,400 seconds. However, factors including daylight saving time and leap seconds can shift the actual length of a calendar day. The concept of a time standard offers a framework for measuring and categorizing time, assigning numerical or calendar dates to specific moments, calculating the duration of intervals, and developing a sequence of events. Recent times have seen several such time specifications attain official standard status, stepping beyond their original use as customs and practices. The development of the cesium atomic clock in 1955 marked a shift from older astronomical time standards, a shift towards standards based on atomic time utilizing the psi second. The primary international time standard comes in the form of international atomic time, TAI, serving as the foundation from which other time standards are determined. Coordinated Universal Time, UCI, adopts atomic time as a means of estimating universal time and adjusts from T by a fixed number of seconds. UTS consistently maintains a gap of less than 0.9 seconds compared to U-Tone with the inclusion of leap second. Our planet's surface divides into several time zones, each operating on standard time or civil time. This standard time deviates from a form of universal time, often UTS, by a set number of hours. Most time zones separate by one-hour intervals, calculating local time as an offset from UTSET from UTSVI, for instance. Maritime zones are UTSI-based. A number of time standards, chiefly for scientific purposes, also exist. These standards, such as terrestrial time, are conceptual, theoretically perfect scales which Tay brings to reality. 
geocentric coordinate time, baricentric coordinate time, and baricentric dynamical time base. Their standards on coordinate times within the framework of general relativity. Cultural perceptions of time have evolved differently across regions and religions. The Inca, Maya, Hopi, and other Native American tribes, as well as the ancient Greeks, Babylonians, and followers of Hinduism, Buddhism, and Jainism. In Venism envision time as recurring cycles of specific ages, touching every living being in the universe from birth to demise. In contrast, Abrahamic religions like Islam and Judeo, Christianity perceive time as a linear progression, beginning with God's creation and culminating at the end time, marking the conclusion of the present worldly order. Two central concepts emerge from the Greek language, Kronos and Kairos. Kronos is illustrative of chronological or numerical time, while Kairos, representing the perfect moment, delves deeper into metaphysical or divine time. As per theology, unlike Kronos, Kairos is qualitative. The personhood of time in Greek mythology is represented by Kronos. His figure as an elderly, wise man with a long gray beard reflects a personification of time. His name is also mirrored in various English words, bearing the etymological root Kronos Kronos, such as chronicle, chronic, and synchronizing. The paradigm of time has long been a subject of debate. A common interpretation among Kabbalists is that time is both a paradox and an illusion, with the future and the past occurring simultaneously. Major philosophers are in disagreement over this. Some, like Isaac Newton, perceive time as being a fundamental part of the universe's structure occurring in sequence, a perspective now termed Newtonian time. Others, like Leibniz and Kent, contend that time is not a measurable entity or a container, nor does it flow. They present it as a fundamental intellectual construct within which humans organize events. It has been hypothesized that there may be a subjective element to time, sparking debate over whether time is something we actively perceive or rather a judgment we deduce. Time has been a point of philosophical inquiry throughout history. Early ancient Greek thinkers questioned if time was linear or cyclical, whether it was endless or restricted. This included theories like the Hindu wheel of time, reflecting cyclical repeats throughout the universe's existence that gave rise to ideas of rebirth and reincarnation. Plato suggests time was created with the heavens and that it represents the motion of celestial objects. Aristotle, on the other hand, link time not to its own existence, but relative to the motion of celestial object. This celestial motion then defined the human concept of time, establishing its duration. Similarly, ancient Hindu philosophy, originating from the Vedas dated to around the late second millennium BC, describes cycles of creation, destruction, and rebirth recurring over vastly long periods of time. Notable Greek philosophers like Parmenides and Heraclitus devoted considerable thought to the nature of time. In essence, time as a concept, whether actual or theoretical, finite or infinite, has significantly lingered over philosophical and theological debates throughout history. Augustine names time as a distension of the mind, a simultaneous comprehension of past, present, and future. This idea conflicted with the views of philosophical contemporaries like Isaac Newton and Leibniz. Newton advocated for an absolute space and time, while Leibniz argued that time and space only existed in relation. As the narrative progresses through the 17th and 18th centuries, philosophers quiz the realist view of time as a tangible part of the universe, proposing instead an anti-realist theory where time only served as an intellectual tool used by humans to calculate and sequence events. Prominent philosophers like René Descartes, John Locke, and David Hume believe that the human mind needs to perceive time to fully grasp its concept. Similarly, Immanuel Kant described time as an a priori intuition that aids us in understanding sensory experiences. In Kant's perspective, time and space were not substances but key elements of a systematic mental framework which determines the experiences of any rational observer. According to Henry Bergson, Time neither existed as a real medium nor as a mental construct, but as what he termed duration, a blend of creativity and memory that forms an essential part of reality. The narrative concludes with Martin Heidegger's thought, provoking statement that humans do not exist within time. They are time itself. He tied the past to an awareness of having existed, enabling the past to subsist in the present. The anticipation of potential possibilities and tasks defined our relationship with the future leading him to claim that humans are ahead of themselves, thereby making the future present. 
Overall, the narrative captures the evolution of the philosophical understanding of time, unveiling the changing perspectives of different philosophers. The concept of imaginary time, neither conclusively real nor unreal, can be difficult to grasp. Notably, philosophers accept the concept of physical time as an externally objective entity, while psychological time is viewed as a subjective entity within the purview of the human mind. Antiphon the Sophist, a 5th century BC Greek philosopher, theorized time to be a concept or measure rather than actual reality, with Parmenides following his theme offering that time, motion, and change are simply illusions this idea of time as an illusion also features in Buddhist philosophy. J. M. E. McTaggart's seminal work, The Unreality of Time, argues that the contradictory nature of every event being both present and not present, future or past, renders the concept of time self-defeating. These discussions often revolve around defining the unreal. Modern physics leans towards viewing time as tangible as space, although interpretations such as Julian Barber's in The End of Time suggest that quantum equations are most accurate when expressed in a timeless realm encompassing every possible now. Presentism, a contemporary philosophical viewpoint, presents past and future as interpretations of motion by the human mind rather than genuine components of time, thereby implying only the present truly exists. This theory opposes time travel at a philosophical level, standing in contrast to theories like eternalism and growing block theory, which uphold the reality of the past and future, respectively. Prior to Einstein's revolutionary reinterpretation of time, it was considered universally consistent across all observers. This Newtonian idea of time underpins non-relativistic classical mechanics. Einstein postulated that the speed of light is constant and finite for all observers. This postulation, combined with a logical definition for simultaneous events, led to the understanding that objects in motion relative to an observer appear to distance and elongate time intervals. Special relativity gave rise to the mathematical structure known as Minkowski space-time, integrating three dimensions of space and a single dimension of time to measure distances based on the speed of light in Minkowski space-time. Two events are separated by an invariant interval, which could be either space-like, light-like, or time-like. Newton's relative, apparent, and common time concept, derived from non-relativistic classical mechanics, provides a basis for clock synchronization. This time, concept helps clarify how different observers moving relative to each other perceive events, which can explain many daily occurrences, however. By the end of the 19th century, this classical time understanding began conflicting with the principles of electricity and magnetism in effect. Resolution was proposed by Einstein via a clock synchronization method that leverages the stable, finite speed of light it revealed that different observers in motion relative to each other note distinct elapsed times for the same event. Historically, space and time are intimately intertwined, combining into space-time as highlighted by Einstein's special and general relativity theories. These theories argue that time's concept hinges on the observer's spatial reference frame, resulting in distinct perception and measurement by humans and instruments like clocks when observers are moving relative to each other. For instance, consider a spaceship carrying a clock, moving through space at nearly light speed. The crew won't perceive any change in time speed on their vessel since everything at the same speed slows down together, including the clock, the crew's cognitive processes and bodily functions, however. A stationary observer perceiving the spaceship would observe it as compressed in its trap direction and the onboard clock to be remarkably slow. Conversely, the spaceship crew would also perceive the observer as slow moving and compressed in the vessel's travel direction, owing to their near light speed relative motion. As a result, the spaceship crew would perceive themselves as rapidly traversing between space regions interpreted by the stationary observer as several light years apart. This discrepancy is explained by the different time perceptions of the crew and the stationary observer what may feel like seconds to the crew may equate to centuries for the observer. Regardless, causality stays unmodified. The past and future are identifiable through light signals received by or sent from any entity. Einstein, known for his development of the theory of relativity, proposed that our perception of time and space can warp significantly, depending on one's observational viewpoint and the speed at juncture it operates. For instance, to an observer at a stationary point of reference, Time appears to slow down and distances seem shorter for a moving, high-speed particle. 
The principle of relativity revolves around the concept of the relativity of simultaneity, which explains that the perception of simultaneous events can vary for observers in different inertial reference frames. This exemplifies through Einstein's illustration of two events occurring at two distinct points A and B in the system K, which may seem simultaneous if they appear at the same point of time when viewed from the midpoint, when viewed from the midpoint. A clear contrast between the Newtonian and the relativistic interpretations of time and space can be observed. In Newtonian physics, the absoluteness of time is the backbone, and no matter the observer's speed or position, the occurrence of events in the present is not influenced. However, in the realm of the theory of relativity, the observable events are absolute, yet not influenced by the observer's movement in terms of whether an event falls within the observer's light cone. Orientating towards a relativistic viewpoint, the concept of absolute time is discarded, making it possible for events to shift in position via the acceleration of the observer. This brings forth the notion of time's seemingly directional attribute. The past is behind us, static and unchangeable, and the future is ahead, not definitively established. Generally, most fundamental laws of physics remain neutral about time's direction and permit for processes to occur in both a forward and reverse direction. This neutrality arises from time being represented as a parameter with no unique proper time. The directionality of time, thus, can sometimes be arbitrary, such as in cases like the cosmological arrow of time and the radiative arrow of time, where light only progresses forward additionally. In quantum physics, violation of CP symmetry leads to a slight time asymmetry which counteracts and upholds keep symmetry. Let's talk about the concept of time quantization a theoretical idea yet not fully accepted in modern physics, like the standard model of particles and interactions and general relativity. Planck time, a time unit in the natural unit system, is where current accepted physical theories are expected to break down, leading to the possibility of it being the smallest measurable time unit. This realm of time is referenced in conjectural physical theories like loop quantum gravity. A significant subplot involves time travel or the potential to move between different moments in time in much the same way as navigating spatial dimensions. This idea has captivated authors since the 19th century, and while there's no substantive evidence supporting such journeys, it hasn't been thoroughly discredited. Either the narrative refers to a time machine for these temporal shifts. A key conflict arises with backward time travel potentially breaking causality, thereby causing a temporal paradox. Various solutions are proposed in the narrative, such as branching points, parallel realities, or universes. Another suggestion is the idea that such paradoxes haven't occurred because they simply can't occur. For instance, the much-debated grandfather paradox, whereby a time traveler kills their grandfather before their parents' conception, is dismissed, as it contradicts established historical fact. The perception of the present moment, or the s-specious present, plays a crucial role, distinguished from the objective present, by being an experience, based interval rather than a moment without duration. The perception of this specious present aligns with the brain's ability to gauge time, comprising various structures including cerebral cortex, cerebellum, basal ganglia, and more of note are the suprachiasmatic nuclei that govern daily rhythm along with other cell clusters facilitating short-range timekeeping. In essence, the story is a thought-provoking exploration of the enigma of time touching on hypothetical time quantization to the allure and paradoxes of time travel, along with the complexity of human time perception. As children's cognitive capabilities continue to develop, their comprehension of time improves. Initially, babies at ages 2 to 3 years old only understand the concept of now. Children around the age of five or six start to grasp the concept of past, present, and future times by the time they're seven to 10 years old. They are capable of utilizing clocks and calendar. It's notable that our perception of time can be influenced by factors like psychoactive drugs, certain illusions, age, hypnosis, and certain neurological diseases like Parkinson's or attention deficit disorder. Psychologists have suggested that time seems to speed up as we age a phenomenon still widely debated. Supporters of this theory propose that the high levels of excitatory neurotransmitters in younger people allow them to better handle rapid external events. Interestingly, humans have been found to conceptualize time in terms of space, referred to as the mental timeline. Mitzel, this suggests that time, rather than being abstract, is mentally arranged in a physical context. 
Literacy, for instance, strongly impacts the type of misstyle we form, as it often reflects the direction in which we read and write. In Western cultures, people's m style generally unfolds from left to right, reflecting the reading and writing direction and positioning the past on the left and the future on the right. Western calendars further reinforce this pattern. However, in cultures where the script flows from right to left like in Arabic, Farsi, Urdu, and Israeli, Hebrew, the missile in the mill, and the mental arrangement of temporal events are reversed. This supports the notion that abstract concepts like time are based on spatial concepts and that the mental arrangement of time events can vary across cultures. It's not universal to mentally organize time in a horizontal, ecocentric mazel as seen in Western cultures. Some cultures employ an allocentric spatialization, often influenced by environmental features. For instance, in a study involving the Yupno people of Papua New Guinea, it has been observed that when referring to the past, individuals would gesture downhill in the direction of the river flowing into the ocean, demonstrating an environment-based spatial orientation for time. The dynamic and varied ways in which disparate groups perceive time opens up broader queries into potential differences in their understanding of other abstract ideas like causality and numerics. Within the fields of anthropology and sociology, time disciplines refers to societal and economic principles, norms, traditions, and time, awareness expectations that govern the perception of time, with scholars like Norbert Elias and Arlie Russell Hochschild contributing significantly to the Sociological discourse on time, understanding how individuals allocate and utilize their time is crucial for gaining a broader grasp on human behavior, education, and commuting habits. This has led to the rise of time, use research, a burgeoning field exploring the distribution of time across various activities technology has influenced how we spend our time, introducing new opportunities to fill our day. However, certain time, use aspects, such as commute duration, Remain fairly constant over extended periods, effective time management involves the estimation and allocation of appropriate durations for specific tasks. Tools like calendars and day planners are prime examples of this. Moving on to the idea of a sequence or series of events, these present a timeline arranged catalog of occurrences, actions, or steps, often influenced by causal relationships. The principle of causality highlights that cause and effect are intrinsically linked with the former preceding the latter. These sequences can be captured in various formats like text, charts, or timelines. Often including a timestamp for further detail, such sequences often depict a path, including time and location details, and are referred to as a world line. These can be utilized across various contexts, from documenting scientific processes to outlining legal procedures illustrative of this. Is the timeline portraying the sequence of events in the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear disaster? Overall, time discipline, time, use research, and sequencing of events are integral aspects of society's relationship with time, contributing to a deeper understanding of our human and cultural lives.